Uh, there's literally a storm occurring, so you know the best car for this kind of weather is the Royal Lamborghini Rivalto. I'm heading over to a GP Performance, um, ex Formula One engineer, now supercar modifier, Antuna. He's the guy, they're the company that put the Gintani exhaust on this car. They organized the whole thing. So um, I'm gonna pay him a visit and show you some of the cool stuff he has there and get him to explain the whole process of putting a Gintani on, on your Lamborghini. He does other stuff as well. Let's open her up. I'm gonna start this car in a few days. Let's begin the journey. Well, I'll just, I'll just see that. So I'm here now with G from GV Performance. Um, he is an ex Formula One engineer and he set up shop as what I think is the UK's best supercar tuner and modifier. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi guys, G here from GV Performance. And yeah, this is what we do. This is we uh, translated our passion into, into sort of a business formula here. So yeah. <laughs> but he says it so casually, like he hasn't got an SVJ, a Revuelto, an Ultimate, a Speciale, an R8 Twin Turbo, an Ur like there's tons of cars here. And he's doing, on all of them, there's all performance work, isn't it? Yes, it's but all performance work. I mean, like we, we specialize mainly in performance work. Servicing, we will only do for select clients, mm -hmm. but majority of these clients will have service packages on their cars. So like yourself, you know, yeah. you go back to Lamborghini, or Ferrari guys will go back to Ferrari. So we don't interfere with that side mm -hmm. of it. So we try to work with modifications so that it fits in with the fabric of the cars without causing too much headache for the end user. There are a couple of crazy modifications we've done. We have got the fastest twin turbo hurricane in the world. We've seen, so not in the world, in, in Europe. I've in seen in it, Europe. I've seen it, it's mad. Yeah. <laughs> it's that out of me. I, I was thinking about uh, another car that, <laughs> uh, but the Buzzy's car is the fastest, um, uh, uh, twin Turbo Hurricane in the UK, it's done a 7.8 quarter mile at Santa Pod. Wow. So, and that was being conservative. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. That's all you need. To, that's all the accolades you need. Like, that is insane. So, how long How long have you actually been doing this? Because I know you left Formula One a few years ago, didn't Just you? Just after COVID. So yeah. We got made redundant, then mm -hmm. we sort of uh, scale down on things. Mm -hmm. I just wanted a different sort of chapter in my life. Now, this is where I've always wanted to be. So, supercars. I've been working on these now for 20 plus years. So I cut my teeth at an independent um, mm -hmm. where I learned most of my trade. So it was mm -hmm. Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Lamborghinis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you can see, I love Lamborghinis. I do, I do love Ferraris as well. Yeah. I mean, there's one client of ours, he's really introduced me to sort of the top end Ferrari models or the Speciale yeah. and all like the, the comp models and stuff. There's something else. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've never been a Ferrari guy, if, unless it's an F40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the same with me though. I, I I wasn't a Ferrari guy. I got my Ferrari and I started to realize like they're very, very good cars. They are very, you know what it is? They're a comfortable suit. Yeah, that's it. The, that, that's where I would put them. And I think the um, Lamborghini's taking some inspiration with the Revuelto because this feels more like a Ferrari than it does uh, an Aventador, for example. <laughs> But, I mean, I don't know, there's a split opinion on the Revolters. They look really nice. Yeah. But having experienced both the drama and the theatre and SVJ gives Yeah, you, you just can't, you can't beat this. You can't beat yeah. this. Yeah. It's, it's something else, you know? Yeah. That is going to need evolution, which yeah. naturally will happen. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be a phenomenal car as well. I yeah. mean, like, obviously, you've been racing Yanni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cooked. Cooked. <laughs> Do you words, did Tommy jump it? They're gonna say by a mile. Uh, no. <laughs> Every time I do anything, my race against Yanni gets mentioned. <laughs> Speaking to Alex Quintani, mm -hmm. um, they didn't, obviously their cars got delayed in the US, yeah, yeah. right? Which is why then he said, right, we've got an opportunity, let's develop it. And I said, hey, you know, I've got the perfect guy. For <laughs> start to you, you know, you've been kind enough to sort of, you know, you know, provide your car to sort of help the fabric of the yeah. the system, you know, started and everything. So it's amazing. Like, you know, you're saying Gim Tommy. <laughs> yeah, it just, you know what? I actually might change my name to that. It, 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 it makes sense. But when you, when you let, when you asked me, I was like, it, it just makes sense because anything, you, anything G does, I, I will support it because I know how hard he works and I know the amount of quality in his work. So when he said that to me, I was like, yeah, of course. Like, if you're co-signing it, let's make it happen. So, so yeah, we sent the uh, exhaust from this over to the States. They scanned it, but 
initially it wasn't a smooth sailing process. I mean, I think initially we discussed, we said three weeks. Yeah, that's what so that's, that's what that's the that's estimate three, was yeah. going to be. Yeah. So we were like, all right, I said, okay, so let's just add another three weeks. Just in case. <laughs> just in case yeah. So as soon as Alex and the team, they built the system, mm -hmm. they've tested it. They weren't happy with a few things. Yeah. So they went back to the drawing board, they tweaked it again. Mm -hmm. And by this time, we're like looking at three months, we're looking, hang on, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. I I'm getting nervous. You obviously yeah. want your car back. <laughs> and we're like, okay, you know, the thing is when you've got a car stripped down for a long time, yeah. no matter how meticulous you are, we put everything in pots, we label everything. Yeah. It's then getting back into it again. Yeah, that you have to remember exactly, exactly. how it was so, taken apart. You know, there's a flow, you strip a car, you mm. build the car back up, you put it back together yeah. again. The minute you put a big interruption in it, you've really got to stop, think mm. that, which is why even after the exhaust system came, I did delay giving the car back to you because we are so fussy. You wanted to make the, sure it's perfect, you know, right? Is, even by being fussy, you can always miss a few little things. Yeah. But obviously a brand new car, there's no instruction manuals for this. <laughs> yeah, literally. We're, we're literally just working on common sense here. So, you mm. know, whatever we take off, it goes back on mm -hmm. again. And then obviously, being a new car, there are fittings and clips and everything that you have to be so fussy and careful. With. Yeah, and you know what's so funny? Um, DDE, um, their Revuelto had a leak in the engine and Lamborghini said, we do not trust the, the the dealership to do it. Not we don't trust them, but the car's so new, yeah. there's nothing in place for them to be able to take it apart, put the new engine in and do it without Lamborghini worrying. So they just sent him a new engine. New engine. So let's quickly go through the cars you have here. This is an Ultimate and obviously it's getting uh, the Gintani exhaust put on. It's so funny, um, the, the, the company is called Gintani, but for some reason off my tongue, the Gintani always comes out. It's the same with me. I can't help it. I think it's a British thing, you know? It's Gintani. <laughs> yeah, because people always like, Tommy, it's Gintani. I'm like, bro, I definitely, I'm trying to say it, but I'm, I start talking, I'm like, you're Gintani. So Gintani exhaust on here, on the Ultima, um, this is a stainless steel exhaust, and this one's valved like my one. So a lot of people don't go for the valved exhaust. Um, I assume it's because uh, it's cheaper to go for the regular straight pipe one, right? It's cheaper to go for the straight pipe. If you're going to put an exhaust system, you're going for sound. Yeah. But then obviously, like you know, your neighbors can't yeah. start, the valves are there but you know you can't drive with the valves on. Yeah, yeah. Just get blown out. So yeah. that's just there for a little bit of noise control. So mm -hmm. when you first start up on cold start, it tries to tame me down a little bit. I see. And then and that's it, you turn them off and it's straight pipe. And how many Aventadors have you have you done? How many have you worked on? I think we are now, this is number 12. 12, 12 Gintanis in the UK because this man. So if your ears are hurting when you're driving, it's because this man's work has driven past. Um, you haven't had any failures, have you? No. See, no. that's, see, no. see, no. that's what you want. No issues, no problems. Do you know what it is with, when you when you have a supercar, you spent several hundreds of thousands of pounds, you get worried about giving it to someone. But when he told me he used to work at a Formula One team, I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> and it's, the proof's in the pudding, zero failures. Uh, there's another uh, Aventador here. This one obviously has a body kit on it. Is that 1016? 1016 on it. Yeah. So 1016 bonnet, mm -hmm. 1016 roof scoop. I believe this is the only one in the UK and Europe to have the scoop. Yeah, I've seen them in America. I haven't seen anyone in the UK no. with them. And the scoop is interesting because it actually doesn't provide provide any air to the engine, it provides it to the ALA system. To the ALA system. Uh, yeah, so, so technically, it's a active. It is active. Yeah, it's an active, active, active roof scoop. That's pretty cool. I, people were saying I should get one for my car. Now that I've seen it in person. I mean, like with this one, we customized it, customized it for this client. He wanted yeah. the Italian flag colors in there. Mm -hmm. So little, little modifications like that we can do. I mean, like we've done a complete style package on this car, the wheels. So the gold the logo, logo, gold wheels, I see. Yeah. I see. That looks incredible. And for everyone that's not from the UK, can you explain what this car is? This is a Nova. <laughs> yeah. This is another good client of Oli. Yeah. So Oli, Oli is the first person who kicked off the Gintani vibe in the UK. A hundred percent, yeah. This SV is what we've done, the center exit exhaust system, mm -hmm. the SVJ style. Yeah. Now he has uh, obviously gone on and he's on his 812. That's the first Gintani in the UK. Again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now he's obviously, Nova was his first car. So we are now sort of uh, sort of make, building a car for like a homage, so yeah. something that you can have. So we're putting a uh, uh, Z20 lit engine in this. You know, we're changing the color because all of you, if you notice, all of these cars are black. Black, it's yeah, it's had some black, yeah. So we're going all with the black theme on it. You know, we've done a rear drum uh, uh, disc conversion from drums. You know, so this this is another one of those uh, little side projects that we do. So we're trying. Yeah, this is where we come from. Yeah, me, D, my business partner. Mm. 
Mark II Golfs, you know, the mm -hmm. Ford uh, RS Turbos, the Series 1. So th this is where our love for cars has yeah. stemmed from. And we've not lost, even though we're working with a beautiful machine like this, mm -hmm. we've not, this still really excites us. And in case you're wondering, in my uh, last video where I was talking about collecting the Revuelto, there was a whole segment about this guy that <laughs> accidentally was cut out. So that is entirely my fault. I did put it in the comments, I'll put it in the description. But um, the video was originally 25 minutes long and we cut it down to whatever it is now, I think it was 12. So um, this, uh, this, is, this is the genius behind it. The car took four months, but it wasn't anyone's fault, especially not this guy. It was just um, fabricating and making sure the exhaust worked properly with the car. There was that video, that guy's revuelto caught on fire. On fire. Yeah. I have my theory as to what I think it was, yeah. but I want to know what you think it was. I think it's uh, exhaust. I think it's heat from the exhaust. It's got yeah. close to something and it's combusted. There's a lot of oils there. There's electrical cables there. There's, there's a lot of things in there. Yeah, because I remember when you took apart um, part of my car so you could fit the exhaust and you could... Remember yeah. the first time? The first time, yeah. Yeah, so when you looked at it the first time, it's very tightly packaged. Let me explain to you how tightly packaged this car is. So to give you an idea of how tightly packaged the Rorato is, this is an Audi R8 uh, V10. This has been twin turboed, hasn't it? So they put a Boost Logic type twin turbo on this, yeah. And look how much space there still is in the engine bay. Um, the way the exhaust exits is very simple. And then you compare it to the Rorato and it's um, a nightmare because the exhaust exits are down there. The packaging is so tight and one thing I noticed, and I know you said it before, yeah. hot parts are very close to things that shouldn't really get hot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You've got your gearbox, you've got, you've got your, you know, the electric motor controls and everything. You can see they've spent a lot of time and effort with all this heat shielding and yeah. everything. So, you know, when you're making a new exhaust system, you've got to try and make sure you match exactly the original fabric yeah. of, the, of the route as well. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is, have hot parts getting close to critical components like oil lines yeah. and catching fire. How did you get into like the automotive industry? How did you get into engineering and cars? My father. Yeah. My dad, uh, he was a privateer rally driver in Kenya. No way. <laughs> <laughs> originally we're from Kenya. Yeah. I think cars, a love for cars is my dad exposing mm. me to that sort of, uh, sort of thing. And then naturally boys, yeah. cars. Um, I, I used to look at these cars. I used to go around looking at these and, you know, wow, and now... You, you're surrounded by them. You're literally surrounded by them. <laughs> so the journey naturally... So I'm an aerospace engineer by... by, by, by <laughs> so I, it was planes for me, but I got bored of that. Yeah. So then for me, naturally, the pull was cars. Mm -hmm. And I've never looked back since then. So Formula One was like the pinnacle. I believe it's the jewel in my sort of CV. Yeah. Having to work in an environment where it's so process uh, process orientated, mm -hmm. and you're working with the best engineers in the world. It yeah. was just it was amazing to be a part of that. I mean, I think that's something that I'll, I'll take. You know, that is yeah. the key thing for me. So currently, this is the GFE Performance temporary premises. I have begged G to let me in on this business because I see it going places. But um, he's, you're moving to a bigger premises, and I, I guess what like what's the reasoning for that? So, like obviously, Tommy, you know where I started. I started off at the back of my hatch. Yeah, that's where I started off. Then this unit became available, so I've moved here because obviously it's um, affordable. Mm -hmm. It's in a nice area. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you know, and the clientele is much better. Yeah. Like where I am, it's really saturated. Yeah. You've got people always trying to outdo each other. Yeah. I just didn't want to be part of that. I'd rather have a select few clients, repetitive work with them, rather than a quantity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, so now the plans are with D and my, D, my business partner. Mm. We are now looking for a bigger premises more encompass so we've got tuning one side servicing we can mm -hmm. have ppf in mm -hmm. one corner body or anything that you want we want to be able to be a one-stop shop so we're gradually getting there my growth has been very organic mm -hmm. i've been blessed with the people around me really blessed i mean like with yourself you know we've done the revolta i've got ollie who's been a day one client of mine yeah. i've had rocky and buzzy support me D's been with, he's my friend. Mm. He's been there with me since day one. Day one, he's been there and he's pushed this now. He's brought mm. in the corporate mindset. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to push, get bigger, get more visibility out there and stop confusing us with Jesus. <laughs> That's honestly like, yeah, the, the passion that I get from um, G, it just makes me uh, have faith in anything. Anytime you touch my car, I have faith. And do you know how I know that, I'm not going to name names, but do you know how, I know that the, the, that mentality is shared amongst the industry. I know car dealerships that will have a problem and ask him 
or they'll, they'll have an issue and he'll go there to help them with something because it's happened before because I've been told. Yeah. So I think, I think that's, that, that says a lot. Um, yeah, man, this is, honestly, I thought I wanted to do this video because A, you, um, with my cars, you've always been absolutely on, like on job with transform, the turnaround's good, the quality control's there. I've never had uh, an issue. My cars can still get, uh, I can still speak to Lamborghini in Italy for issues in my car because you, you don't mess around with anything. No, no. You just do what, like, you just do the right thing. You put the clips back. And even G, I think, I can't remember what it was. I think it was my um, SF90, a clip broke. Yeah. He ordered the clips to replace, like, just those little things. Cause it doesn't, like, one clip doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really no, matter. It's, it's, it's the fabric of the car. Yeah. It's an expensive car. It should be put right. Forget everything else. Forget it having to be quality control. It's a personal thing. Yeah. I have a personal competition with myself. I've done enough um, glazing as it is. Like, honestly, like, I just thought, I wanted you guys to hear his story because to me, the story's crazy. And he's getting married tomorrow? Yes. He's getting married tomorrow I'm, and he's I'm, come I'm, out here to this I'm video. Really sorry, no, no, oh my God. Just me. There's a few things that Oh my God. Okay, that. anyway, so, so listen, like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to put um, GB Performance's details. Uh, in the description and um, yeah you're gonna see me doing a lot more work uh, with them and uh, a lot more first like the first uh, Gintani exhaust customer exhaust um, just random bits of bulbs like that and I, I've got I've got some stuff I want to do I'm not gonna ruin it yet but I'll, I'll you guys will see soon but when when I get my 918 this is the only guy that's allowed to touch it <laughs> but uh, yeah thanks for watching um, uh, thanks to G, my Remember, guy. Don't forget GV, not GV. Not GV. <laughs>